but being friendly and being a friend, I think, are two different things. I think there are many whites who act friendly toward Negroes. A fox acts, acts friendly toward the lamb. Mm -hmm. And usually the fox is the one who ends up with the lamb chop on his plate. Mm -hmm. The wolf doesn't act friendly. And therefore, the <coughs> wolf has more difficulty in getting the lamb chop in his plate. I'd like to point out, though, that... And I, I, I say that because it is usually the, if you study the structure of the Negro community, mm -hmm. economically, politically, civically, psychologically, and otherwise, it's controlled by the white liberal, mm -hmm. who usually poses as the friend of the Negro, who actually differs from the white conservative in, in the same way that the fox differs from the wolf. Mm -hmm. uh, their appetite is the same. Mm -hmm. Their motives are the same. It's only their mannerisms and, and methods that differ. Mm -hmm. I would agree that um, no doubt there have been a large number of, of whites who have posed as liberals and as friends of the Negro and who have time and again betrayed the Negro. Uh, on the other hand, I think one could point to a large number of whites uh, who have struggled for civil rights, for example. equality, and have got little or nothing out of it uh, other than uh, quite a few bruises. Give me an example. Well, the, the large number of, of white uh, students who have gone into the South, for example, working for SNCC and other organizations. Not working for SNCC or other organizations, but working for uh, the white uh, political machines who benefit by the voting uh, efforts of Negroes. Okay. I'll be more specific. Uh, I would cite Herbert Hill, for example, as, an, <laughs> as, as a kind of person who has uh, championed Negro job rights, for example, uh, in New York City and elsewhere. He has fought the political machine. First time I met Herbert Hill personally was when they were picketing to stop the working on the uh, Harlem Hospital in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Negroes for 10 years had to fight the city to get uh, an annex built on the Harlem Hospital. Because in Harlem we need a hospital more so than anything else. Our people are sick. Plus we do a lot of cutting and shooting of each other, though we profess to be nonviolent. And uh, Herbert Hill brought his forces out and stopped the working on that site. Uh, this is the first time I ever saw it. Then uh, when work was brought to a halt on a hospital in Harlem, the same Negroes tried to uh, stop the work at the downstate uh, medical center in Brooklyn, which is predominantly white. They, they were out there for three months during the summer. Couldn't stop anything. And I never saw Herbert Hill out there one time. Now, whenever something, whenever it takes... Uh, a stoppage of something that's going to affect the white man. You find the white liberal absent. But it, when it uh, involves something that primarily will affect the best interests of black people and black people only, then that white liberal is present. Herbert Hill is the labor secretary for the NAACP. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if he was interested in black people, he would prepare a black man with the type of knowledge and understanding of the labor troubles involving black people that would enable uh, a black man to sit in the same position as Secretary of Labor or Labor Secretary in the NAACP. I'm suspicious of whites who join Negroes and always have to be in the lead, who always have to be the head, who always have to be at the top in Negro organizations. Those whites who really have the interest of blacks at heart, let them give some advice to some Negroes and stand on the sideline, but don't join the organization and then get at the head of it and pose as a friend of Negroes. Well, I. I would uh, defend his sincerity and his commitment. And more than that, I would say that just because a person is a Negro or a black American does not mean that he's going to struggle for, for Negro rights or, or for jobs for Negroes or anything else. I think that today you could point to a large number of, of Negro leaders who have consistently betrayed Negroes in a whole host of areas. They aren't really Negro leaders. These are puppets that have been put in front of the Negro community by white liberals. These are parrots that have been put in front of the Negro community by white liberals. You can't name me a Negro leader who has been a Negro leader who has been who has betrayed Negroes, who is not who has not been endorsed, sanctioned, uh, subsidized, and supported by the white liberals. Minister Malcolm, I'd like to well, I could cite one example it would be Congressman Dawson, for example, in Chicago and in. In Chicago, a large number of liberals located in the Hyde Park District have consistently fought Dawson and his betrayals of the Negro, and they've also fought 
some of the people who represent Dawson on the Chicago City Council. The only Negro I know who is constantly fought, only Negro politician that I know who is constantly fought by white liberals is Adam Clayton Powell. Mm -hmm. And they call him a racist because he speaks so bluntly on the race issue. Uh, but I'm not, as I said, not too familiar with Dawson and his work. 